cytoskeleton. A cytoskeleton is the framework of the cell, and it's what determines the cell shape. So when we looked at the difference between that long muscle cell and that red blood cell on that very first slide, this is what the cytoskeleton is going to help us determine. But it can have extensions on it for movement that are a little bit different. Flagella, I think you're familiar with, um, or have a whip-like tail. Cilia are just the little hairs like on the edge. Um, the only place you're going to see a flagella is in a sperm. Uh, cilia pro pro propel substances upward, so quite often you'll see cilia in the inside of the respiratory tract, help you get mucus, and it's a protective mechanism. The next thing that we're going to talk about is movement through the cell membrane. Um, you know, I showed you that that's a bilayer with proteins that allow the channels to move through, um, but the channel will only allow some things and not other things, which makes it semi-permeable. Okay, so there are three kinds, two main categories of transport. The first is passive transport, and we call it passive because it requires no energy. Um, no ATP is expended to make passive transport happen. Examples, diffusion, osmosis, filtration, and facilitated diffusion. Now, facilitated diffusion, the best example of that occurs with insulin. To be able to use sugar inside the cell wall, we have to have another chemical transport it through the wall. It can't do it by itself. So sugar alone can't get in. It must have something to facilitate or help it get through. And in this case of sugar, it's insulin. And that's the role of insulin is to transport sugar into the cells. So we call that facilitated diffusion. Active transport does require ATP. It does require an expenditure of energy. So to, a couple of examples of that include the pumps. We have a sodium-potassium pump that we're going to talk about in detail. And another example are vesicles. And those can either be an endocytosis or an exocytosis. And we're going to talk about those two things. Um, this picture illustrates diffusion. Diffusion is defined as movement of particles from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. Um, this can happen in air or it can happen in water. The example here is of, uh, for instance, a dye tablet put into a beaker of water and you begin to see it dissolve and as it dissolves it evenly disperses or diffuses, diffuses through the other.